Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm really excited to share this video with you today. Thanks to the people at Boost Auto Parts for sending me these mirrors to install on my 2022 Chevy Silverado LTD. These are their towing mirrors that will fit the new body style 2019 through 2022 Chevy Silverados. And these are the Boost Auto Parts manufactured mirrors that are based off of the GM towing mirrors. They give you all sorts of cool add-ons and things like that to include on your mirrors that GM didn't have or doesn't have or whatever. So big thanks to Boost Auto Parts for sending me these. Again, I've done some videos for them in the past and it's been a good relationship to work with them. So definitely uh, visit their website. I'll post some links in the video description box below. So this video is going to be for installing these mirrors on a 2020 to a 2022 non-refreshed model. There is a little bit of difference between 2019 versions that have a slightly different wiring and also 2022 0.5 the refresh models that also have slightly different wiring I'll post those links for their videos in the description box below So just know that if you have a 2019 or a 2022.5 Refresh your procedure is going to be slightly different when it comes to wiring But overall the same installation procedure is what you're going to follow you take off the door panel You install the new mirrors you do some wiring you button everything back together and you go down the road looking cool So this set of mirrors that boost has sent me is a fully decked out set these are going to have the power fold feature, which utilizes those two black modules on either side. It is a wireless module that enables that feature that we hook up with the mirrors and into the wiring of the vehicle so that we can power fold the mirrors. It's pretty cool. Also, those wireless modules are part of the front spotlight that is available on these mirrors. So I'll flip those over in just a second and show you what I'm talking about. There's also a rear spotlight on those that gets tied in with the factory wiring as well. But these ones have the turn signals in the mirror. You can just barely see them there in the video. This one also has the blind spot monitoring system. If your truck comes equipped with that, you can keep that feature in these mirrors. I believe these ones also have the heated top and heated lower portions so that if you have uh, the defrost setting in your truck, this will connect to that as well. Let me flip these over so you can see what they look like on the other side. So here on the other side, we've got a sequential turn signal that's gonna be in this section here. So it's gonna actually be a sequential turn light. Uh, this, this part right here is the front facing spotlight. The wireless motor that's built into the hinge here is the power fold and we'll hook it all up and we'll walk you through it here on the video. We've got some stuff to do on the truck first before we actually install the mirrors like removing the door panels and things like that. So we're going to jump right into it. Follow along. Start by lowering the windows on the passenger and the driver's side doors. Using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the clamp on the negative battery cable and set it aside to disengage the battery from the vehicle. Door panel removal is the same for both sides. Remove this little trim piece behind the door latch and use a 7mm socket to remove the screw that is behind it. Remove the door grab trim by pulling firmly on the trim. You may lose a couple of the metal clips in the door, but use a pair of pliers to remove them and reattach them to the trim piece on the back side. Using your 7mm, remove the two screws behind the door grab. Lastly, you can remove the two 7mm screws on the bottom of the door panel. Gently pry around the perimeter of the door with a trim removal tool to loosen the clips that attach the panel to the door itself. They should just pop free and then you can lift the door panel off of the door, exposing the connectors behind the door. Take special care on the locking tab up at the top of the door to make sure you don't damage it. Remove the door latch mechanism by pressing on the white tab and then rotating the assembly away from the door and out of its slot. Disconnect the door harness connector by opening the red locking tab and then raising the locking lever. You can then remove the connector from the housing, then you can remove the gray clip that's holding the harness to the door. Remove the plastic grommet that's behind the mirror mount at the top of the door. Save this for later. Open the red locking tab on the mirror harness connector then depress the tab and remove the connector from the mirror. Using a 13 millimeter socket, remove the four mounting nuts from the factory mirror. Remove the factory mirror from the outside of the body. Carefully feed the wiring from the new boost mirror into the hole on the body. 
Be careful not to pinch any wires as you mount the new mirror in place and secure it using the provided 13 millimeter nuts. This part would be helpful to have a helper to hold the mirror while you secure the nuts from the inside at the mount. Firmly mount the hardware. There's no torque spec, but do not over tighten these. They just need to be nice and snug. Remove the 7mm screw that holds the speaker to the door. Tilt the speaker away from the door and lift it out of its mounting point. Remove the gray clip on the back side of the speaker. Disconnect the harness from the speaker by opening the red locking tab and squeezing the connector. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, push these two gray clips into the door cavity by squeezing the connector and then pushing them into the opening. Feed the mirror harness connector to the speaker opening at the bottom of the door. Next, remove the boot on the door jam connector by pushing into the top of the boot and then lowering the boot out of the way. Then open the red locking tab and lower the lever arm on the connector to free it from its socket. Feed the door jam connector out of the door jam and then push the grommet into the door cavity. Just like the mirror connector, Feed this harness all the way to the speaker hole on the bottom of the door. Remove the white clip that holds the door connector harness to the door. Then push in the grommet for the harness into the door cavity. Pull the two black clips from inside the door cavity to release the harnesses so you can pull them all out through the speaker opening. Then feed the door connector down into the cavity and out through the speaker hole like the other two harnesses we did previously. You should now have three connectors coming out of the speaker hole. The mirror connector, the door connector, and the door jam connector. All right, if you've been with me up until now, everything's been pretty benign and easy to do. Um, but now we're actually going to start digging into the wiring for this. Starting with this door jam connector, we're going to actually open it up so that we can insert some new wires that come with the kit. And the way we open it up is by lifting up on this white locking tab. This allows new wires to be pushed in from the back of the connector here. And we're going to use the wires that they include in the kit. There's two harnesses they include that have red, white, and blue wires. And these wires will get pushed into certain pins. I'll tell you which ones they're going to be. And then we're going to push the other rest of that harness down through here. And we're going to add some wires into the mirror connector here. Remove the tape and the zip tie at the base of the door jam connector. Be careful not to damage the factory wires when removing the tape and snipping off the zip tie. Go slow and take your time. Using a small pick, raise the white locking tab on the top of the connector. This will allow us to insert new wires into the back of the connector. With the grooves on the wires facing the right, install these wires into the connector from the back side. There's a red and blue wire. Insert this wire into pin number 22 on the connector. There will be an audible click when you get the connector fully seated. Insert the white wire into pin number 4. The blue wire is going to go into pin number 42. Verify these wires are firmly seated and then close the locking tab on the top of the connector. Feed those three wires down through the door jam connector and out the other side of the boot. I lost this footage because I didn't realize my camera died. Tape up the wires around the door connector and then reattach a zip tie to hold the connector to the wires. Make sure you add some tape right at the base of the connector so that when you zip tie the connector to the wires, it doesn't chafe the wires. Don't forget to cut off the excess zip tie. Next, route the three wire harness from the boost kit all along the interior factory harness all the way to the mirror connector. Use electrical tape to secure the three wire harness to the factory harness. Make sure you put the three wire harness on the opposite side of the clips so that they don't get pinched when you reinstall all of the connectors. So just work your way with the three wire harness all along the factory harness until you bring it to the mirror connector. Tape as often as you'd like to secure that three wire harness to the factory harness. Now we're going to insert 
three of these wires into the mirror connector. But first, loosen some of the tape on the insulation around the mirror connector and cut back some of the tape at the base of the connector. Be careful not to damage the factory wires when you're doing this. Use a really sharp knife to cut through the electrical tape easily. Expose about three inches of factory wire from the connector. Now, using a small flathead screwdriver, pry open the locking tab on the mirror connector so that we can install new wires into the pins. Do this on both sides of the connector. Install these wires with the grooves facing down. The red and blue wire is going to go into pin number 8. The white wire is going to go into pin number 16. Remember, you're going to get an audible click when these wires fully seat in the connector. Lastly, the blue wire on the three wire harness is going to go into pin 13. However, if pin 13 is occupied, cut the factory wire about two inches back from the connector. Then cut the blue wire from the boost harness about two inches back from the pin. Save the short two inch pigtail for use later. Now connect the blue wire from the boost kit to the factory wire at pin 13 using the supplied butt connector. Remove a little bit of insulation on the wires. Use a crimping tool to crimp the butt connector onto the wires, making sure they are fully crimped. Take the factory wire that was in pin 13 and connect it to the two inch pigtail that you removed from the boost harness. Take the pigtail from the boost harness and insert it into pin number five. Use the supplied butt connector to connect the new pigtail at pin five to the factory wire that was at pin 13. Crimp them together and make sure the connection is secure. If pin 5 is not empty, cut the wire 2 inches from the pin. Then connect pin 5 to the previous pin 13 wire on the factory harness. Use the provided butt connector. Tape the factory wire that was going into pin 5 down and out of the way. It is no longer used. Use a heat gun on the butt connectors to seal the heat shrink around the wires. Close the locking tab on the mirror connector so that we can begin taping up the wires. Feed the door connector harness back to its original location and pull the grommet back through the hole to secure the harness in place. Next, feed the mirror connector back up through the door cavity and out of its hole at the top near the mirror's mounting points. Reconnect the mirror connector to the new Boost Auto mirror. Don't forget to close the red locking tab. Secure the two gray tabs on the mirror connector harness in the door cavity from inside the door cavity. Lastly, feed the door jam connector back out through the hole in the door jam and secure the two black tabs on the door jam harness to the inside of the door cavity. Reconnect the door jam connector into its socket in the door jam. Lift the locking lever into place and close the red locking tab. Put the boot over the top of the connector and close it. Lastly, pull the grommet from the door cavity so that the door jam connector is sealed. Reconnect the speaker and close the red locking tab. Reinstall the gray clip into the back of the speaker. Then you can lower the bottom of the speaker into the mount and tilt it back to the door and reattach it with the seven millimeter screw. Up to this point, all of the steps are identical on the passenger side, except for the pin locations on the door jam connector. After opening the locking tab on the connector, Install the red and blue wire into pin number 22. Install the white wire into pin number 4. Install the blue wire into pin number 39. Under the dash on the driver's side, remove the gray and black BCM connectors. Using the tap provided, tap pin number 9 on the black BCM connector. Use a pair of pliers to squeeze the tap onto the wire. 
On the gray connector, repeat the process on pin number four. Use the tap provided and a set of pliers to squeeze the tap onto the wire. Install the white jumper wire from the gray connector to the black connector on the taps you just installed. Make sure you get the blade centered on the T-tap to ensure a good quality connection. Then reinstall the black and gray connectors back into their sockets on the BCM. Locate the grommet that covers the mounting location for the new mirrors. Pass the harnesses that come off of the new mirror through a small hole that you cut in the grommet. Reinstall the grommet back into place with the wires coming through. Locate the boost harness with the two white connectors and the two black connectors and connect them to the wires coming out of the new mirror. If adding power fold and front facing spotlights, connect the two black connectors with blue and yellow wires together and the pink wire to the orange wire. If you're not adding the front spotlight, leave the orange wires dangling because you won't use them. Locate the door connector and snip the zip tie from the end of the plastic piece. Remove the plastic piece and peel back some of the tape. On the driver's side door connector harness, tap the wire going into pin number 17 with a red tap and crimp it shut with a pair of pliers. Install another red T-tap on the wire coming from pin number 30 and crimp it shut with a pair of pliers. Locate the two leads that are coming off of the mirror, connect the black wire to the tap at pin number 30, and connect the red wire to the tap at pin number 17. Make sure the blade gets centered on the tap to ensure a quality connection. Close up the door connector by reinstalling the cover, and then zip tie the wires to the cover. Don't forget to trim off your excess zip tie. Similar to the driver's side, cut a hole in the grommet that covers the mirror mounts. Pass the wires through the hole and then reseal the grommet into the door. Locate the harness with the two black connectors with yellow and blue wires and two orange wires and connect them to the appropriate wires coming out of the mirror. If you're not going to have the spotlight, remember the orange wires are not going to be connected to anything. Locate the passenger side door connector harness and snip off the zip tie and remove some of the tape so that we can open up the connector. Locate the wire coming out of pin number three on the harness and then use a blue tap that is provided and crimp it shut with a pair of pliers. Locate the wire at pin number 10 and also install a blue tap on this wire crimp it shut with a pair of pliers. You can then reinstall the cover on the connector and zip tie it closed. Locate the leads from the passenger side mirror harness and install the red wire to the tap on pin number three and install the black wire to the tap on pin number 10. Now we can install the wireless modules to the back side of the door cards. You can simply zip tie the modules to the fabric on the inside of the door or mount them in another place of your choosing. Make sure you install the wireless module with two sockets on the driver side and the wireless module with one socket goes on the passenger side. Tape up the wires for the mirror harness as best as you like and then secure them to the factory wiring using a zip tie. Zip tie up any slack into a bundle but leave enough slack so that you can connect the wireless module harness to the wireless module when you bring the door panel back to the door. Connect the wires into the wireless module then reconnect the door connector, close the locking lever and close the red locking tab. Reconnect the door latch mechanism to its location near the top of the door panel. Align the locking tab on the door panel with the hole on the door panel. Then you can lower the door panel over the top of the locking tab and line up the holes on the door panel to the door. Work your way around the door panel and secure all the clips into the door. 
Reinstall the two 7mm screws on the bottom of the door panel, then the two behind the door grab, then the one behind the door latch handle. Reinstall the trim piece behind the door latch handle, and reinstall the trim at the door grab. Slide the left side in first and then secure the pins by pushing firmly. Passenger side door panel reinstallation is exactly the same. So now that our installation is done on our new towing mirrors, we can start looking at some of the controls on the inside of the cab. This is what the view looks like sitting from the driver's seat. And here is the passenger view. And the controls work the same as they normally would for adjusting the top mirrors. The bottom mirrors remain manual. You adjust those manually, but the top mirrors are powered and will continue to use the functions that were normally on the truck. So you push a button to select which mirror to use it lights up and then you can adjust the mirrors left and right, up and down, just like normal. Now to use the front facing spotlight and the power fold feature, you have to use a special set of commands on this keypad to engage the wireless modules. It's very easy. First you engage the top left mirror button and then you do a left left right right sequence. It's probably going to be too faint to hear, but you will hear the module in the door do a double beep. And that activates the module. To fold the mirrors, you press the down button. To unfold them, you press the up button. And it's going to be too difficult to see right now because I'm on the opposite side of the mirror. But to engage those front-facing spotlights, you press the right button. So right now they should be on. It's hard to tell because it's bright out. And to disengage it, you press that button again. And then you can either let it time out automatically or you can disable it by pressing left, left, right, right again. And you'll get three beeps coming from the module in the door. And that means the wireless module is deactivated and you can go back to normal functions of the mirror. They did say that um, after disabling the module, the left and right functions might be a little bit delayed because uh, they want to prevent you from reactivating the module when you're actually just trying to adjust the mirror itself. So just keep that in mind. It's nothing wrong with the vehicle. It's just how the module is interacting with this keypad now. Another feature that these mirrors have is defrost option. Even if your factory mirrors were not defrost, if you have the defrost button for the rear window, which is this one right here, activated right now because I'm testing the feature, these mirrors will have defrost built into them for the top and the bottom sections. And I tested it with my laser thermometer and the temperature goes up and you can actually Actually feel a little warmth um, using the back of your hand those mirrors are actually warming up so that is definitely a cool add-on to these mirrors lastly these mirrors came equipped with the blind spot monitoring system you can see the little icon there my truck does not have that featured they just included it on this set so that you could see what functions you could get with it so if you have blind spot monitoring in your vehicle those will in fact carry over to the new mirrors last thing I want to talk about is the design features of these right now I have the sequential turn light signal running light on these so that it starts on one side and goes to the other. There's multiple options for this back panel lighting. So there's the sequential, there's a standard, just kind of blinking uh, with the running light. And then I think there's also uh, smoke and amber versions of this, or this is the black smoke version. And there's multiple options for this back panel. So check out that on their website. You can also get multiple options for this top piece here. This is just the standard black, but you can get this in, uh, I believe, chrome, and then also in a paintable. So you can get them and then take them to a body shop or paint them yourself and swap out the 
mirror caps and make it match your vehicle's color. That pretty much sums it up for this video, guys. I really like the way these mirrors look on this truck. At first, I wasn't a big fan of the new style tow mirrors on these new trucks, but I've learned to grow on the look. So I'm definitely liking how they look on this truck right now. Be sure to visit the Boost Auto Parts website. I'll post a ton of links in the video description for all sorts of good stuff, videos that they've made for these mirrors, links to their website for this product and all the other trucks. Definitely give them huge props. They sent me these as a promotional set prior to them even going on sale so that I could get this video made for everyone out there. And I really, really appreciate that. Big thanks to Boost Auto Parts there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you subscribe. Stay tuned for new videos. We'll see you next time. Later.